Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 26th September 2024. In this video, we are going to discuss three important articles from today's newspaper. The first one is about the small island nations and the impact of climate change on the small island nations. The second one is about the basics of Project Cheeta. The third one is about Assam Accord. So these are the three important articles we are going to discuss in this video. Let us get into the discussion. Now look at the first article. It is about the status report of Project Cheetah. See, Project Cheetah has completed two years of its reintroduction. It was introduced in 2022, September 17, and now two years have been completed. There were two important objectives of Project Cheetah. The first one is to establish a stable and breeding population of cheetah in central India. The second one is to promote cheetah as an umbrella species in central India ecosystem. There were originally 20 cheetahs reintroduced into Kuno Polpar National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Until now, 23 cubs have born and out of this, 5 cubs have died and only 17 are remaining. So, this is the general status report of Project Cheetah. In this context, let us broadly discuss about the Project Cheetah. See, there were two main species of cheetah. The one is African cheetah and the other one is Asiatic cheetah. The African cheetah are listed as vulnerable in IUCN red list. The Asiatic cheetah are only present in Iran and it is listed as critically endangered. Cheetahs have gone extinct in India in 1952 and now there are several reasons for the extinction. Let us see them. There are three main reasons for the extinction of cheetah. The first one is overhunting, habitat loss and then prey depletion. See, there were overhunting of cheetahs during Mughal era. For example, if you take Emperor Akbar, he held 1000 cheetahs in his captivity. Also, the deforestation and rapid urbanization have caused the loss of habitat and this also led to the extinction of cheetah. Due to loss of habitat, their prey is also depleted. So, this also led to extinction of cheetah. Now, let us discuss about the project cheetah. This was originally initiated in 2009 and the cheetahs were reintroduced in India only in 2022. The cheetahs were sourced from Namibia and South Africa. So, they were African cheetahs. There were no Asiatic cheetahs in India. The reintroduction site was chosen as Kuno Polpar National Park in Madhya Pradesh. So, totally 20 cheetahs were reintroduced in 2022. Now, there are three main objectives of reintroducing cheetah. The first one is breeding population. To establish a viable and stable population of cheetah in central India, which is their historical range. The next one is to restore open forest and savanna ecosystem. So, restoration of their ecosystem, that is the grassland ecosystem, and to restore the degraded forest is their important objective. The last one is about the community benefits. The reintroduction of cheetah will promote the ecotourism and enhance the livelihoods of the local communities. So, thereby the community benefits are also one of the important objective of cheetah reintroduction. So, establishing a stable breeding population, restoring the ecosystem, promoting ecotourism and enhancing the livelihoods are the three major objectives of cheetah reintroduction. Now, what are the ecological impacts of cheetah reintroduction? See, cheetahs were introduced as the top predator in their grassland ecosystem. So, this is their functional role and this will help to maintain the ecosystem. The next one is ecosystem services. The reintroduction of cheetah will lead to improved management of neglected ecosystem and degraded forest. So, this will keep in account of prey population and will lead to the management of grassland ecosystem. The next one is the restoration of grassland ecosystem. The cheetah reintroduction will revive the prey predator dynamics as cheetah acts as a flagship species thereby it will conserve the other endangered species. So, these are the ecological impacts of cheetah reintroduction. Now, what are the community and economic benefits? As we have seen earlier, ecotourism, local employment and sustainable development. The cheetah reintroduction will generate economic opportunities for local communities. The local people can act as guides, trackers and they can involve in conservation activities. So, thereby this will lead to local employment opportunities. So, this is about the community benefits. The reintroduction of cheetah into their historical range will balance the wildlife conservation and also the community welfare. So, thereby it helps to achieve the sustainable development goal of India. So, ecotourism, improving the local employment and enhancing the sustainable development goals are the important community benefits of this cheetah reintroduction. Now, talking about the monitoring and management, the satellite and GPS trackers were used to monitor the movement and health of cheetahs. In the process of monitoring, the local communities were also involved. So, the project cheetah will also get the help of local communities and this part is called the Cheetah Mitra Initiative. So, in this discussion, we have seen what are the objectives of project cheetah, what are the ecological impacts and benefits of project cheetah. With this, let us conclude the discussion. 
and let us discuss a MCQ related to this topic. Consider the following statements regarding Project Cheetah. Cheetah is being reintroduced in India after it was declared extinct in 1952. Yes, this statement is correct. We have seen this in the discussion. Now look at the second statement. Cheetahs for Project Cheetah are being sourced from Iran where the Asiatic cheetah population exists. This statement is incorrect because the Project Cheetah got its cheetahs from Africa, from Namibia and South African countries. This statement is incorrect because the cheetahs for Project Cheetah are sourced from Namibia and South Africa and not from Iran. The primary objective of Project Cheetah is to re-establish cheetahs in India's grassland ecosystem enhancing biodiversity conservation. Yes, this statement is correct. Kuno Polpur National Park in Madhya Pradesh has been chosen as the first site for reintroduction of cheetahs under this project. Yes, this statement is also correct. So, only the option 2 is incorrect. So, the correct answer is 1, 3 and 4 only. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at the second article. It is about the Assam Accord. Recently, the Chief Minister of Assam has met all Assam Students Union and assured that Justice Biplop Sharma Committee recommendations will be implemented. The Justice Biplop Sharma Committee recommendations are related to Assam Accord. So, in this discussion, we are going to discuss about the Assam Accord. See, Assam Accord is a pivotal agreement which is signed on August 15, 1985. It is signed between Government of India and the leaders of Assam Movement. The Assam Movement was headed by All Assam Student Union and All Assam Ghana Sangram. The Assam Movement was headed by All Assam Student Union and All Assam Ghana Sangram Parishad. So, this Assam Movement was started in 1979 and it was driven by various concerns like influx of illegal migrants from Bangladesh, which is then the East Pakistan. So, the main objective was to safeguard the identity, culture and resources of indigenous Assam population. So, this is what the Assam movement and this is why Assam Accord was created. Now, what are the key provisions of Assam Accord? The first one is deduction and deportation. As I have said earlier, illegal immigration into Assam from Bangladesh was a major problem. So, the core issue addressed by Assam Accord was the illegal immigration of foreigners into Assam, which is particularly from Bangladesh. So, the agreement was set on March 25, 1971 as a cut-off date. So, the all persons who entered Assam before this date were to be recognized as Indian citizens. And all the persons who entered Assam after this date were to be deducted and deported because they are illegal immigrants. So, the cut-off date on Assam Accord was March 25, 1971. The second one is electoral role revision. See, the Assam Accord mandated updating Assam's electoral roles to exclude the names of those who entered Assam illegally after the cut-off date. Then about the safeguards for Assamese identity and culture. The government of India promised constitutional, legislative and administrative measures to protect, preserve and promote the cultural and linguistic identity of Assamese people, that is the indigenous Assamese people. Then another major objective is economic development. See, Assam Accord promised to accelerate the economic development of Assam through special programs are also launched for education, health and employment for the youth of Assam. So, the economic empowerment of Assamese people is also an objective of Assam Accord. The next one is prevention action against future immigration. The government set up various mechanisms to prevent the further illegal immigration into Assam by strengthening the border security and erecting physical barriers such as border fences. So, this is also a provision of Assam Accord. The next one is restoration of peace and normalcy. The Assam Accord promised a general amnesty for all people who involved in Assam movement. So, the aim of this amnesty is to restore the peace and normalcy in the state. So, thereby decreasing the violent activities which is happening in the state. So, let us revise the key provisions of Assam Accord once again. The first one was deduction and deportation of illegal migrants. Then the electoral role revisions. Then the safeguard of Assam's identity and culture. Then economic development. Then preventive action against further illegal immigration. And then restoration of peace and reduction of violent activities. So, these are the important key provisions of Assam Accord. Now, let us see about the implementation and challenges in this Assam Accord. There is no doubt that Assam Accord was a landmark agreement. But the implementation of Assam Accord faced several challenges. There were political, social and administrative hurdles which slow down the identification and deportation of illegal migrants. Let us see what are the key challenges. The first one is National Register of Citizens, that is NRC. 
NRC was a crucial aspect of the Assam Accord implementation. A major update of NRC was carried out in Assam in 2019. So this has led to the exclusion of over 1.9 million people. So this exclusion of this much of people remains controversial till today. The next important issue is border fencing and security. The border with Bangladesh remains porous in certain areas. So this makes it difficult to completely prevent illegal immigration. Then there is conflict over Citizenship Amendment Act. The terms of Assam Accord have been conflict with the provisions of Citizenship Amendment Act. The CAA grants citizenship to certain groups of immigrants who arrived by December 31, 2014. So this is conflicting with the complete blockage of illegal immigrants from foreign countries, which is mentioned in Assam Accord. But this CAA grants citizenship to certain group of immigrants. So this general conflict between CAA and Assam Accord has led to many protests in Assam. So this is an another major issue. Now finally, let us see some significance about this Assam Accord. See, this Assam Accord is significant because it addresses the long-standing concerns of indigenous population. And it also addresses the concerns regarding the illegal immigration of foreigners into Assam. So it represents an effort. So the Assam Accord represents an effort to balance the demographic stability with the national security and economic development. So this is about the basics of Assam Accord. With this, let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Which of the following was a key provision of Assam Accord? Introduction of separate currency for Assam. This is obviously incorrect. Granting autonomy to Assam. This is incorrect. Reduction and deportation of illegal immigrants. Yes, this is correct. We have seen this in discussion. Immediate cessation of all industrial activities in Assam. This is obviously incorrect. So, the correct answer is deduction and deportation of illegal immigrants. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. At the UN General Assembly, the developing nations urged the rich countries, especially the G20 countries, to take stronger action on emissions and climate finance. They also emphasized the growing disparity between those countries which cause the climate change and those countries which suffer from climate change. The corporation and banks also pushed for increased investment in renewable and nuclear energy. So in this context, let us discuss about small island developing nations and what are the impact of climate change on them. Let us get into the article. The small island developing nations are a group of 38 low-lying coastal countries which are primarily situated in Caribbean, Pacific and Indian Ocean region. So these nations face unique challenges due to their small size, geographic isolation and their vulnerability to climate change. Now, what are the impacts of climate change on small island nations? See, the first major impact is sea level rise. The small island nations are highly vulnerable to high sea level rise which threatens to submerge the entire islands and also leads to displace of populations. So, this may damage their freshwater resources due to salination. For example, the Maldives, Tuvalu and Kiribati Islands are at the risk of losing large portions of their land to the rising sea level. So the Maldives is situated in Indian Ocean, Tuvalu and Kiribati are located in Pacific Ocean. The second major impact is extreme weather events. See the increased frequency and intensity of storms and hurricanes and also the cyclones can severely damage the infrastructure and economies of these small island states. The Caribbean islands also face annual hurricanes which result in significant loss of life and economy. So the extreme weather events and unpredictable weather events will also lead to the loss of livelihood and economies of these small island states. Another major impact is economic losses, food and water security. See, climate change not only affects the lives but also their livelihood. The climate change adversely affects the key sectors like tourism and fisheries. It also leads to the degradation of coral reef and ocean acidification which undermine the tourism and marine biodiversity. So these small island nations mostly depend on tourism for their economy. The climate change and the rise in sea level will impact their tourism activities and thereby impact their economy. For example, the chloral bleaching will threaten the fisheries and tourism dependent economies. Then about the food and water security, the sea level rise will lead to salt water intrusion into the freshwater sources. So this will lead to droughts and reduction of agricultural productivity in these small island states. So the reduction of agricultural productivity and the sea level intrusion into their freshwater resources will make them more dependent on imports. So this is another major impact of climate change on these nations. So this is another major impact of climate change on these small island states. Now let us see some points as way forward. The small island developing states must invest in climate resilient infrastructure, yearly warning system and coastal production measures. For example, they can involve in mangrove restoration and coral reef restoration projects. So this adaptation strategies will help them to mitigate the effects of climate change. The next one is climate finance. 
the international financial support particularly from developed nation is critical for the climate finance they can use the climate funds like green climate fund which prioritizes the small island developing states for adaptation and mitigation efforts so the small island developing states can use this climate fund to improve their mitigation efforts the next one is technology transfer the transfer of technologies for renewable energy water desalination and climate resilient agriculture can help these small island states to enhance their adaptive capacity the next about global emission reduction see the developed nation particularly the major emitters must to fulfill their commitments under paris agreement to limit their global warming below 1.5 degrees celsius they must also provide necessary financial and technical assistance to small island developing states who are struggling with climate change so on one hand the developed and developing nations must reduce their emissions on other hand the small island states must improve their adaptation and mitigation efforts so these are some of the way forward points for the article now let us see an mcq related to this stuff arrange the following small island developing states from west to east see this is a map based question we have to understand where these islands are located on which ocean each of this island are located if you take fiji it is in pacific ocean if you take kiribati it is also in pacific ocean the jamaica was situated in caribbean sea and maldives was located in indian ocean so now we can easily arrange from west to east the first one will be jamaica the second one will be maldives and in between fiji and kiribati the fiji is on western side so it will be third and the last one is kiribati so the west to east arrangement is first one is jamaica second one is maldives third one is fiji and fourth one is kiribati so with this let us conclude the discussion now we have come to the end of the video if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankarayas academy youtube channel thank you for watching